recorded lecture is all about radiographic film. So first, let's define what a radiographic film is. So it displays the radiographic image and consists of emulsion of silver halide, which when exposed to light produces a silver ion and an electron. So that process or that procedure is all about the formation of the latent image. So it is also a photographic receptor consisting of photographically active or radiation sensitive emulsion coated on a thin sheet like material. So this is responsible to record the physical impression of an object by which we can get details about the objects. So this material, the radiographic film, is where we can record the part under examination. So the construction and characteristics of radiographic films are similar to those of regular photographic film. But the, the radiographic film has a spectral response different from that photographic film. Let's say that the radiographic film are more sensitive compared to the photographic film. But its ways or its mechanism of, of operation is much the same. So the process on how we develop the photographic film and the radiographic film is the same, but the sensitivity is different. Okay, so there are two types of film. Let's start first with direct exposure or non-screen film. So in a direct exposure, the emulsion of this type of film is thicker than that of screen film. In a direct exposure, we only have a single emulsion. Okay, so this contains higher concentrations of silver halide crystals to improve direct X-ray interaction because a direct exposure film doesn't use an intensifying screen. Therefore, it cannot use a cassette, a film cassette. For the direct exposure film to be hold, we have to use a special type of cardboard. Okay. So, this type of film is used to image thin body parts. So, for example, we have hands and feet that is thinner compared to other parts of the body. This type of film can produce a high subject contrast. A direct exposure film interacts directly with x-rays. It doesn't need a light to produce the latent image. X-rays are the, are the thing that is responsible to interact with the silver halide crystals. X-rays interact directly with their silver halide crystals to form the latent image. So a, a direct exposure film have advantages. First is it can decrease the parallax effect or the crossover. So parallax effect happens when a film have double emulsion. Okay, so again parallax effect happens on a double emulsion. So ano ba yung may mga double emulsion? Double emulsion are the screen film type. But for direct exposure, we have a single emulsion. That's why the advantage of using a direct exposure or non-screen film is it could decrease a parallax effect. So what is parallax effect? Parallax effect is the apparent displacement of an image as seen in the radiograph. So for example, this will be our film. Okay, this is the cross, uh, cross section of our film. This will be your base and this will be your emulsion. Again, the parallax effect only happens on a double emulsion film. So what happens on a crossover? In our emulsion, we have the silver halide crystals. 
the divergence of our beam is not straight. The x-ray divergence from our source is not straight. It goes like this. So in parallax effect, if our rays interacts with the silver halide crystals in this divergence, therefore, it could pass through the two emulsions from the base. So when this ray will interact with your silver halide crystal on your first emulsion, it could pass through the second emulsion on the silver halide crystal which is not in the same direction as your first emulsion. Okay? So what happens is that the x-ray will interact in the silver halide crystal and also in this one on your second emulsion. On the image, you can see an overlapping but with the same part. There is an overlapping on the same part. Overlapping can cause distortion on the image. Okay? But in a single emulsion or in a direct exposure, we won't have a parallax effect. Bakit po walang parallax effect? Single emulsion lang yun eh. Wala na tong second emulsion where the ray can interact if it will pass through the base. So, wala tayong parallax effect. Okay. So, next advantage of the direct exposure is it will decrease quantum Motel. So, quantum motel is the random nature by which x-rays interact with the image receptor. Quantum motel appears on the image as salt and pepper or yung tinatawag nating radiographic noise. Quantum motel happens when the use of technical factor is not sufficient on the part under examination. For example, you used low technical factor when penetrating a thick part of the body. Do you think this will be sufficient on the thickness of the part? No. So what will happen? It will appear on the image as salt and pepper because the ray or the radiation cannot pass through some part. There are loose parts. Did you get it? Compared to using a higher technical factor to, penet to penetrate a thick body part. A high technical factor can penetrate this part of the body. So, all of our radiation can pass through the thickness. So, you cannot see a radiographic noise. You cannot see a salt and pepper type of artifact in your cassette. So, quantum motel quantum motel will be decreased in a direct exposure film since Using a direct exposure film, it will require a higher technical factor because this technical factor will be responsible on your contrast. Technical factor directly interacts with the film. Technical factor is responsible for the production of your x-rays. In a direct exposure film, x-rays interact directly. Okay? So now, as I've said, the advantages of using a direct exposure film is it will decrease the parallax effect 
that causes distortion in the size and position of the image because of the beam divergence and parallax effect happens on a double emulsion film. Next is it will decrease the amount of noise or the quantum motel on the radiograph since our direct exposure is need the need of direct exposure is the x-ray to directly interact with your film quantum motel only happens when you seeing a lower technical factors so now let's proceed to the disadvantages of a direct exposure film first is it will have a higher technical factor to interact directly with your direct exposure film therefore the patient dose will increase okay next if our direct exposure film have a thicker emulsion therefore it will have a higher amount or higher concentration of silver halide crystals. If we have higher concentrations of silver halide crystals or thicker emulsion, it requires more development time. More development time for our processing chemicals to interact with our silver halide crystals. Okay. So the advantages of using a silver uh of using a direct exposure is we will decrease the parallax effect and we we will decrease the amount of noise in the image. That noise is from the quantum model. And the disadvantages of using indirect exposure it is, will, is we will have to use a higher technical factor that will cause a higher patient dose. Since our direct exposure contains higher concentration of silver halide crystals, we will need a higher development time, a longer development time for our processing chemicals to interact with this. So the application, let's proceed to application of a direct exposure or non-screen film. This is used for intraoral dental radiography. When we say intraoral dental radiography, the film is placed directly inside the mouth of the patient. We have a periapical, bite wing, and oclusal films. Next uh, application of direct exposure film is the kidney surgery films. So, kidney surgery films uses a direct exposure and also the radiation monitoring films or the TLD. So, those are the applications of a direct exposure film. Now, let's proceed with the screen film. This type of film uses the intensifying Screen. Screen film have double emulsion. Okay. So this is the most commonly used nowadays. And they these have characteristics that must be considered. Or these characteristics should be considered when choosing what type of screen film should be used. So first we have contrast. When we say contrast, the film should exhibit a multiple contrast level. Multiple contrast level because the contrast, the contrast or the difference on the contrast will depend on the size and distribution of the silver halide crystals. Depends on the size and distribution of silver halide crystals. So we can say that the film exhibits a higher contrast if we have a smaller silver halide grains 
with a relatively uniform green size. If the film will exhibit a lower contrast, it means that the size of our greens are larger and these have a wider range of sizes. Okay, so contrast depends on the size and distribution of the silver halide crystals. Next is the speed or the sensitivity of the screen film combination to x-rays and light. So for, for a direct exposure film, the speed depends on the concentration and total number of silver halide crystals. Speed is the sensitivity of the screen film combination to x-rays and light. Since our direct exposure doesn't need an intensifying screen because it directly interacts with our x-rays, its speed depends on the concentration and total number of silver halide crystals. For screen film, the speed the, the determinants of the speed for for a screen film are the size of your silver halide crystals the shape and concentration the reason why the size and shape of your silver halide crystals is included as a principal determinant of the film speed for a screen film is because this is responsible for capturing the light from the intensifying screen. It is responsible for the covering power of our silver halide crystals to capture all the light emitted by intensifying screens. So, to optimize speed, screen films are usually double emulsion. So, as I've said earlier, when we say double emulsion, the emulsion is placed on either side of base. Double emulsion is used for films that is uh, placed on a cassette. Diba cassette have intensifying screens. Okay. Next is the crossover. Crossover is the exposure of an emulsion causing by light from the opposite radiographic intensifying screen. So if the parallax effect is responsible for the distortion of the size and position because of the displacement of the image on the radiograph, our crossover will cause blurring on the image. It's like the same principle as parallax effect, but in this case, on the crossover, the light, the light causes an, a blurring of the image due to the passing through of the light from the base that could interact on the opposite emulsion. So, di ba ganito? This is our uh, film, cross-section, base, emulsion, intensifying screen, intensifying screen. Once the radiation interacts with your intensifying screen, it will transform it into light. Siyempre, dito din, meron yan magkakaroon pa rin yan ng light. So, once this light interacts with our silver halide crystal, if the size and shape of our silver halide crystals are not intact with each other, may mga space between the silver halide crystals, it could pass through between these two silver halide crystals going to the base and could reach the second intensifying screen. The light will bounce back that could interact 
with your silver halide crystals on the second emulsion. Okay? So, tabular green emulsion reduces crossover because of its covering power is increased, which relates not only to light absorption from the screen, but also to light transmitted through the emulsion to cause crossover. As I've said, if your silver halide crystal sizes and shapes are not intact with each other, they are not closed with each other, there are spaces with each other, there is a possibility that the light from your intensifying screen could pass through the base and reaching your second intensifying screen and that light will bounce back that could interact your other silver halide crystals on your second emulsion. That crossover can cause blurring of the image. So, what can we do to prevent a crossover? We can add a light absorbing dye in a crossover control layer. Okay, so let's say that this is our cross section of the film. This is your base, this is your emulsion. Now let's locate where should be a crossover crossover control layer should be located or should be placed. Here. Alright. So we have to add a light absorbing dye in this layer to prevent or to reduce a crossover to near zero. So this crossover layer have three critical characteristics. First, it absorbs most of crossover light. Once we have this crossover control layer, the light even though that our silver halide crystals are not intact with each other, it won't pass through the base. Therefore, there, would no, there will be no interaction with your second emulsion. Next, this does not diffuse into the emulsion but remains as a separate layer. It will not be mixed with your emulsion. So last, for our crossover layer, this is completely removed during processing. So, nawawala siya during processing. Okay? So, next is the spectral matching. So, spectral matching is the most important consideration in the selection of modern screen film. It is where a green sensitive film should be matched with a green emitting intensifying screen. And blue sensitive films should be matched with the blue emitting intensifying screen. So our screen is made up of phosphors. And these four phosphors are the one who produces light, who transmits light. So phosphors can be made up of rare earth elements or a calcium tungstate. Rare earth screen, which is made up of rare earth elements with atomic numbers 57 to 71, emits ultraviolet, blue, green, and red. Again, rare earth screen emits ultraviolet, blue, green, and red. These are made up of rare earth elements. Rare earth screen is faster than calcium tungstate screens. Aside from rare earth screen, we have the calcium tungstate screen where it emits blue and blue violet light only. Again, calcium tungstate screen emits blue and blue violet light only. All silver halide films respond to violet and blue light, but not to green, yellow, or red unless they are spectrally sensitized with 
dyes. So all of our films are sensitive to blue and violet light. Our green sensitive lights are spectrally sensitized. There is a dye that is placed on our film to be sensitized or to be spectrally sensitized with the colors of the rare earth screen. Okay. So, green emitting screens should be matched with the film sensitive not only to blue light but also to green light, which is what we call the orthochromatic films. So, blue emitting or ultraviolet emitting screens should only be used with blue sensitive films. Can a blue emitting screen can be used to a green sensitive no but the green sensitive film can be used in a blue sensitive or blue emitting screen so in short term um, the green sensitive films or the orthochromatic films can be used to a blue emitting screen but the monochromatic films should only be used to blue emitting but it is best that orthochromatic films should be used with green emitting screens kasi magkakaroon ng effect with a radiograph or with our films when it is used in a different green or in a different light emitting screen Okay, so next is the safe light. Safe lights, when we say monochromatic or the blue sensitive film, we have to use a filter which is called Rotten 6B. For an orthochromatic film, we have to use a filter which is called GBX2. The filters of safe light depends on the sensitivity of the films that we are using. So those are the factors that are the characteristics that should be considered when uh, choosing the type of the screen film. When choosing what type of sensitivity of your screen film.